So it is really lovely to be here to celebrate the National Healthcare Science Week. And what a privilege as Chief Executive to be able to open the conference today. We really, really value our healthcare scientists. They are absolutely essential for the delivery of high quality care. We've got to look after them. They are amazing. My name is Dominic Foy. I'm the lead for medical physics at Royal Bournemouth Hospital. This forms part of the National uh, Healthcare Science Week. Uh, and we are getting together as a group of hospitals around this region. A lot of groups within the National Health Service move across boundaries. So there's Wessex, there's, there, are other centers, there are other groups for pathology, another group for vascular, um, and they, the borders are not always in the same place. And so we've got a fairly loosely defined Southern Counties remit where um, hospitals within, probably within 50, 80 miles of each other will try to work together to uh, support each other and to, to promote the knowledge of our existence really within the health service. Uh, and, and how important we are to it. Uh, we can't live without them and they really can't live without us. I'm, I'm Dr Jo Horn from University Hospital Southampton uh, and I'm a consultant healthcare scientist in histopathology and also lead healthcare scientist for the Trust. And I did a talk this morning about routes available to consultant and sort of senior or advanced practice um, that are outside of the National School of Healthcare Sciences HSST programme um, because the HSST programme is fantastic but I come from a specialism where it doesn't exist so so I had to look for other opportunities um, and it, actually it was only when I finished the pathway myself which was quite meandering that I realised actually it does map along to what's in the HSST which um, really is advanced sort of specialty consultant level clinical practice, uh, doctoral programme um, and also leadership and management and I did all of those things separately so I just talked about general examples and also my own experience of um, being part of the CSO WISE leadership programme um, about three years ago which was my leadership development and also uh, I have been part of a reporting programme in histopathology for healthcare scientists, and that's run by the Royal College of Pathologists and the Institute of Biomedical Science, and that was a four-year programme, uh, and that's given me a DIP-RC path rather than FRC path, which is what most people coming out of consultant level have within life sciences. Um, and I also did a professional doctorate at the University of Portsmouth, um, which my trust supported um, in the last sort of 10 years. It took me a few years to do that. So I've come out at the same kind of point, um, but by a completely different pathway. And I just wanted to inspire people that maybe don't have the same opportunities, um, that there are other ways that you can find your way to advanced um, practice or leadership or management. I'm John Copley, I'm from PsyConnect, which is an organisation that trains scientists in how to communicate with non-scientists. Well, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to come and talk today about science communication skills and the benefits and opportunities of developing them further for healthcare scientists. So that could be talking about their specialist expertise to specialists in other fields, and also, of course, when they're interacting with patients as well. My name's John Flannery. I'm a healthcare scientist. I work in neurophysiology in Poole. Well, today's really been the chance to introduce the Southern Counties Healthcare Science Network to all my colleagues in the Wessex region uh, in healthcare science. The network will bring good practice together. We can learn from each other and share best practice with everyone. I'm Lisa Ayres. I'm the HSST Training Programme Director based at the National School of Healthcare Science. So I was asked to give a talk about um, advancing your career through HSST. So I gave a bit of an overview about what the HSST programme is, what the academic components are, what the workplace components are, the different pathways that are available because it's a bespoke programme, so sometimes it can be a bit confusing. So I went through those pathways and then also talked about some of the successes from HSST and what HSST can offer you to advance your career. Hi, I'm Josh Naylor. I work in radiotherapy at Poole Hospital and I'm a physicist. So we are a bit like a pharmacist, I guess, um, does with drugs. Uh, physicists in radiotherapy look after the dose of the radiation that patients receive for cancer treatment. I've spoken about excellence reporting. Um, so we all at, in hospitals report incidents like datixes or airs forms and errors. Um, and that only gets a small part of the picture. You, you miss out on this whole realm of when things go really well and when people and our colleagues or we do things brilliantly and um, exceed what would, 
what is normal practice. And there's so much to be learned from that. And it, it's a really positive process to study those, as well as looking at when things go wrong and learning from that and improving on that, but to also study and learn from when things go right. So I'm Dr. Elaine Clapman Green, and I'm Joint Trust Lead Healthcare Scientist at Great Ormond Street Hospital. So I'm talking about the importance of collaboration and networks, um, and we're using some examples of what's happened in London and therefore what could be ported out to other um, centres. So some thoughts about how to go about it, how you might get funding for it, what boxes you might want to tick, and if there's a specific niche that you want to fulfil that isn't already occupied by other spaces so that you can get the most out of whatever work you're about to do. Hi, my name is Leslie Chandra. I'm lead uh, clinical scientist and lead clinician at the Royal Devon Exeter Hospital, and I am uh, covering the southwest and giving you some information on what's been happening in our region over the last year. So we've looked at some of the um, subjects that we're covering um, over the last year. So we talked a lot about the uh, healthcare science uh, fair that we had, some of the presentations that people had done, and looking at how we're then going to develop services within the region, how we link up the communications that, that, that we have as a, as a team, both as lead scientists but also as um, within our own trusts and how we get the information out and raising the profile of uh, healthcare science as a whole. It's been a, a really good day so far, quite inspiring talks and uh, I'm looking forward to the afternoon. It's been fascinating to hear about all the different training and development opportunities and pathways uh, available to healthcare scientists and, and as part of Healthcare Science Week to celebrate uh, the role of healthcare scientists in the NHS. I think it's brilliant to bring us all together and to actually share our expertise and, and knowledge. It's been hugely encouraging, all the comments we've had from everyone about uh, the training schemes, science communication and uh, the benefits of networking have all been hugely encouraging. It's been really helpful actually, you got the opportunity to speak to a lot of healthcare scientists and find out what it is they're doing and what they're interested in doing in the future. It was also really good to um, hear about science communication and the ways that we can use that and it's given me some ideas to promote to current HSSTs for um, communication opportunities for them. Today's been brilliant, it's been really, really interesting. I think particularly the, stuff, the um, information that's been given on um, extending roles and looking at different ways, so HSST is a very long um, course, so you're looking at five years, but there are other ways to progress your profession. And I think it was particularly interesting to hear those. It's a good diversity of, of ways to go forward in our professions. Today's been brilliant. Um, I think some highlights for me, probably the uh, science communication, that I found that really helpful. Um, not, and thinking about that, um, not just talking to, say, people in a school or at a careers evening, which is something that I have done, but also talking to colleagues at work in other professions or managers um, and communicating uh, what we do, for, say, for me in radiotherapy physics. And also looking to advance our careers. Um, some of the talks have uh, spoken about uh, PhD level qualifications and training, uh, and many other routes for, for progressing in, in our, future, our future careers. Oh, it's really good. I love the science communication talk. I think as scientists, we need to be doing more of getting out there and speaking to other people. So listening to a really great talk about how you go about that was really great. And Joe's talk about how there are lots of different ways to get to wherever you want to be. It's not always that you have to follow this specific route. You can kind of go left and right and find the right way for you as an individual. I think it's a really important message to take away.